In mathematics, four-dimensional space is a geometric space with four dimensions. It typically is more specifically four-dimensional Euclidean space, generalizing the rules of three-dimensional Euclidean space. It has been studied by mathematicians and philosophers for over two centuries, both for its own interest and for the insights it offered into mathematics and related fields. Algebraically, it is generated by applying the rules of vectors and coordinate geometry to a space with four dimensions. In particular a vector with four elements can be used to represent a position in four-dimensional space. The space is a Euclidean space, so has a metric and norm, and so all directions are treated as the same. The additional dimension is indistinguishable from the other three. In modern physics, space and time are unified in a four-dimensional Minkowski continuum called space-time, whose metric treats the time dimension differently from the three spatial dimensions. Space-time is not a Euclidean space. History Lagrange wrote in his Mécanique Analytique that mechanics can be viewed as operating in a four-dimensional space, three of dimensions of space, and one of time. In 1827 Mobius realized that a fourth dimension would allow a three-dimensional form to be rotated onto its mirror image, and by 1853 Ludwig Schlafler had discovered many polytopes in higher dimensions, although his work was not published until after his death. Higher dimensions were soon put on firm footing by Bernhard Riemann's 1854 habilitation schrift. Über die Hypothesen Welcher der Geometrie zu Grundlegen, in which he considered a point to be any sequence of coordinates. The possibility of geometry in higher dimensions, including four dimensions in particular, was thus established. An arithmetic of four dimensions called quaternions was defined by William Rowan Hamilton in 1843. This associative algebra was the source of the science of vector analysis in three dimensions as recounted in A History of Vector Analysis. Soon after tesserines and coquaternions were introduced as other four-dimensional algebras over R. One of the first major expositors of the fourth dimension was Charles Howard Hinton. Starting in 1880 with his essay What is the Fourth Dimension, published in the Dublin University magazine, he coined the terms tesseract, Anna and Cater in his book A New Era of Thought and introduced a method for visualizing the fourth dimension using cubes in the book Fourth Dimension. In 1886 Victor Schlegel described his method of visualizing four-dimensional objects with Schlegel diagrams. In 1908, Hermann Minkowski presented a paper consolidating the role of time as the fourth dimension of space-time, the basis for Einstein's theories of special and general relativity. But the geometry of space-time, being non-Euclidean, is profoundly different from that popularized by Hinton. The study of Minkowski space required new mathematics quite different from that of four-dimensional Euclidean space, and so developed along quite different lines. This separation was less clear in the popular imagination, with works of fiction and philosophy blurring the distinction, so in 1973 H.S.M. Coxeter felt compelled to write, Little, if anything, is gained by representing the fourth Euclidean dimension as time. In fact, this idea, so attractively developed by H. G. Wells in The Time Machine, has led such authors as John William Dunn into a serious misconception of the theory of relativity. Minkowski's geometry of space-time is not Euclidean and consequently has no connection with the present investigation. H. S. M. Coxeter, regular polytopes vectors. Mathematically four-dimensional space is simply a space with four spatial dimensions. That is a space that needs four parameters to specify a point in it. For example, a general point might have position vector A equal to this can be written in terms of the four standard basis vectors. Given by so the general vector A is vectors add, subtract and scale as in three dimensions. 
the dot product of Euclidean three-dimensional space generalizes to four dimensions as it can be used to calculate the normal length of a vector, and calculate or define the angle between two vectors as Minkowski space time is four-dimensional space with geometry defined by a non-degenerate pairing different from the dot product. As an example, the distance squared between the points in is 3 in both the Euclidean and Minkowski and 4 spaces, while the distance squared between n is 4 in Euclidean space and 2 in Minkowski space, increasing actually decreases the metric distance. This leads to many of the well-known apparent paradoxes of relativity. The cross product is not defined in four dimensions. Instead the exterior product is used for some applications, and is defined as follows. This is bivector valued, with bivectors in four dimensions forming a six-dimensional linear space with basis. They can be used to generate rotations in four dimensions, orthogonality and vocabulary. In the familiar three-dimensional space in which we live there are three coordinate axes, usually labeled x y, and z, with each axis orthogonal to the other two. The six cardinal directions in this space can be called up, down, east, west, north, and south. Positions along these axes can be called altitude, longitude, and latitude. Lengths measured along these axes can be called height, width, and depth. Comparatively, four-dimensional space has an extra coordinate axis, orthogonal to the other three, which is usually labeled W. To describe the two additional cardinal directions, Charles Howard Hinton coined the terms Anna and Cater, from the Greek words meaning up toward and down from, respectively. A position along the W axis can be called spissitude, as coined by Henri Moore. Geometry the geometry of four-dimensional space is much more complex than that of three-dimensional space, due to the extra degree of freedom. Just as in three dimensions there are polyhedra made of two-dimensional polygons, in four dimensions there are four polytopes made of polyhedra. In three dimensions there are five regular polyhedra known as the platonic solids. In four dimensions there are six convex regular four polytopes, the analogues of the platonic solids. Relaxing the conditions for regularity generates a further 58 convex uniform four polytopes, analogous to the 13 semi-regular Archimedean solids in three dimensions. Relaxing the conditions for convexity generates a further 10 non-convex regular four polytopes. In three dimensions, a circle may be extruded to form a cylinder. In four dimensions, there are several different cylinder-like objects. A sphere may be extruded to obtain a spherical cylinder, and a cylinder may be extruded to obtain a cylindrical prism. The Cartesian product of two circles may be taken to obtain the duo cylinder. All three can roll in four-dimensional space, each with its own properties. In three dimensions, curves can form knots but surfaces cannot. In four dimensions, however, knots made using curves can be trivially untied by displacing them in the fourth direction. But two-dimensional surfaces can form non-trivial, non-self-intersecting knots in four-dimensional space. Because these surfaces are two-dimensional, they can form much more complex knots than strings in three-dimensional space can. The Klein bottle is an example of such a knotted surface. Another such surface is the real projective plane, hypersphere the set of points in Euclidean 4 space having the same distance r from a fixed point P0 forms a hypersurface known as a 3-sphere. The hypervolume of the enclosed space is this is part of the friedman limater robertson walker metric in general relativity where r is substituted by function r with t meaning the cosmological age of the universe. Growing or shrinking r with time means expanding or collapsing universe, depending on the mass density inside. Cognition Research using virtual reality finds that humans in spite of living in a three-dimensional world can without special practice make spatial judgments, based on the length of, and angle between, line segments embedded in four-dimensional space.
The researchers noted that the participants in our study had minimal practice in these tasks, and it remains an open question whether it is possible to obtain more sustainable, definitive, and richer 4D representations with increased perceptual experience in 4D virtual environments. In another study, the ability of humans to orient themselves in 2D, 3D and 4D mazes has been tested. Each maze consisted of four path segments of random length and connected with orthogonal random bends, but without branches or loops. The graphical interface was based on John McIntosh's free 4D maze game. The participating persons had to navigate through the path and finally estimate the linear direction back to the starting point. The researchers found that some of the participants were able to mentally integrate their path after some practice in 4D. Dimensional Analogy to understand the nature of four-dimensional space, a device called dimensional analogy is commonly employed. Dimensional analogy is the study of how dimensions relate to n dimensions, and then inferring how n dimensions would relate to dimensions. Dimensional analogy was used by Edwin Abbott Abbott in the book Flatland, which narrates a story about a square that lives in a two-dimensional world, like the surface of a piece of paper. From the perspective of this square, a three-dimensional being has seemingly godlike powers, such as ability to remove objects from a safe without breaking it open, to see everything that from the two-dimensional perspective is enclosed behind walls and to remain completely invisible by standing a few inches away in the third dimension. By applying dimensional analogy, one can infer that a four-dimensional being would be capable of similar feats from our three-dimensional perspective. Rudy Rucker illustrates this in his novel Spaceland, in which the protagonist encounters four-dimensional beings who demonstrate such powers. Cross sections as a three-dimensional object passes through a two-dimensional plane. A two-dimensional being would only see a cross section of the three-dimensional object. For example, if a spherical balloon passed through a sheet of paper, a being on the paper would see first a single point, then a circle gradually growing larger, then smaller again until it shrank to a point and then disappeared. Similarly, if a four-dimensional object passed through three dimensions, we would see a three-dimensional cross-section of the four-dimensional object, for example, a hypersphere would appear first as a point, then as a growing sphere, with the sphere then shrinking to a single point and then disappearing. This means that visualizing aspects of the fourth dimension was used in the novel Flatland and also in several works of Charles Howard Hinton. Projections A useful application of dimensional analogy in visualizing the fourth dimension is in projection. A projection is a way for representing an n-dimensional object in n-1 dimensions. For instance, computer screens are two-dimensional, and all the photographs of three-dimensional people, places and things are represented in two dimensions by projecting the objects onto a flat surface. When this is done, depth is removed and replaced with indirect information. The retina of the eye is also a two-dimensional array of receptors but the brain is able to perceive the nature of three-dimensional objects by inference from indirect information. Artists often use perspective to give an illusion of three-dimensional depth to two-dimensional pictures. Similarly, objects in the fourth dimension can be mathematically projected to the familiar three dimensions, where they can be more conveniently examined. In this case, the retina of the four-dimensional eye is a three-dimensional array of receptors. A hypothetical being with such an eye would perceive the nature of four-dimensional objects by inferring four-dimensional depth from indirect information in the three-dimensional images in its retina. The perspective projection of three-dimensional objects into the retina of the eye introduces artifacts such as foreshortening, which the brain interprets as depth in the third dimension. In the same way, perspective projection from four dimensions produces similar foreshortening effects. By applying dimensional analogy, one may infer four-dimensional depth from these effects.
As an illustration of this principle, the following sequence of images compares various views of the three-dimensional cube with analogous projections of the four-dimensional tesseract into three-dimensional space. Shadows A concept closely related to projection is the casting of shadows. If a light is shone on a three-dimensional object, a two-dimensional shadow is cast. By dimensional analogy, light shone on a two-dimensional object in a two-dimensional world would cast a one-dimensional shadow, and light on a one-dimensional object in a one-dimensional world would cast a zero-dimensional shadow, that is, a point of non-light. Going the other way, one may infer that light shone on a four-dimensional object in a four-dimensional world would cast a three-dimensional shadow. If the wireframe of a cube is lit from above, the resulting shadow is a square within a square with the corresponding corners connected. Similarly, if the wireframe of a tesseract were lit from above, its shadow would be that of a three-dimensional cube within another three-dimensional cube. Bounding volumes dimensional analogy also helps in inferring basic properties of objects in higher dimensions. For example, two-dimensional objects are bounded by one-dimensional boundaries. A square is bounded by four edges. Three-dimensional objects are bounded by two-dimensional surfaces. A cube is bounded by six square faces. By applying dimensional analogy, one may infer that a four-dimensional cube, known as a tesseract, is bounded by three-dimensional volumes. And indeed, this is the case. Mathematics shows that the tesseract is bounded by eight cubes. Knowing this is key to understanding how to interpret a three-dimensional projection of the tesseract. The boundaries of the tesseract project are volumes in the image, not merely two-dimensional surfaces. Visual scope being three-dimensional, we are only able to see the world with our eyes in two dimensions. A four-dimensional being would be able to see the world in three dimensions. For example, it would be able to see all six sides of an opaque box simultaneously, and in fact, what is inside the box at the same time. Just as we can see the interior of a square on a piece of paper, it would be able to see all points in three-dimensional space simultaneously, including the inner structure of solid objects and things obscured from our three-dimensional viewpoint. Our brains receive images in the second dimension and use reasoning to help us picture three-dimensional objects. Limitations reasoning by analogy from familiar lower dimensions can be an excellent intuitive guide, but care must be exercised not to accept results that are not more rigorously tested. For example, consider the formulas for the circumference of a circle and the surface area of a sphere. One might be tempted to suppose that the surface volume of a hypersphere is, or perhaps, but either of these would be wrong. The correct formula is, 